This is Get Real with Bob and Stacy, the show that helps you learn about the mortgage and real estate markets. Get the inside scoop from their expert list of guests and have some fun along the way. Now, here's Bob Callagher and Stacy Alcorn. Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy. You're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. Joining us by phone today is Dr. Stan Beecham, author of Elite Minds and Performance Psychologist. Welcome to the show, Dr. Stan. Thank you for having me. So I want to give everybody some background on Dr. Stan Beecham. He is a sports psychologist and director and founding member of the Leadership Resource Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Since 1998, he has been helping organizations maximize performance and realize their full potential of their human resources. Senior executives utilize Dr. Beecham's expertise to guide them through the process of selecting and developing high-performance teams. In addition to his coaching and consulting engagements at the Leadership Resource Center, he is a professional speaker and writer committed to advancing the science of leadership development. His book, Elite Minds, How Winners Think Differently to Create a Competitive Edge and Maximize Success, is a book uh, written by Dr. Stan Beecham, again, top-level sports psychologist and leadership consultant. So I was reading a little bit on your background Dr. Beecham, explain Uh for our audience how you got started in this line of work to begin with. Well, I started off thinking I'd be a clinical psychologist Mm -hmm. and got my doctorate degree in clinical psychology. And uh, and I'd always been interested in working with athletes. In fact, when I was an undergraduate, I started working with the kickers on the football team at Georgia. And uh, after I finished up, I, uh, I contacted Vince Dooley, who was the athletic director at Georgia. Mm-hmm. And we started talking about sports psychology and, um, you know, basically said, you know, you're going to have a sports psychologist someday. You either be one of the first or the last, but it's coming. Mm-hmm. And so he hired me, and then I spent the next four and a half years at Georgia working with uh, 19 different teams that they had then. Wow. And uh, from that, started doing business consulting. Wow. So I was reading in your bio, you talk about if the unconscious mind controls the human body 90 to 95 percent of the time. Interesting fact. How do we control our habits to achieve success? Yeah. So what I want people to understand is that the mind kind of functions on two levels, right? The conscious mind, which most people are aware of, Mm -hmm. that's kind of where you do your thinking. Mm -hmm. And then the unconscious mind, which is you might call your belief system, the the beliefs that you have about yourself and the world that basically dictate what you do or don't do. So, for example, if if I believe that I'm not good enough to do something, I'm not going to attempt to do that. Mm-hmm. But I may not actually think at it about a conscious level, right? It's just a, an unconscious belief that I have about myself. And And when you start working with people in performance setting, what you find is that majority of people have some very strong beliefs about themselves in terms of what they're not capable of doing that's beneath their potential, if you will. And it's very limiting to them, but they don't really have any awareness of it. Does that make sense? Yes. It does very much. And And, so, hmm. yeah, so what you're trying to do then is identify the unconscious belief system and then bring it into consciousness so that people say, you know, I never thought about it that way, but now that you've mentioned it, that's true. And so that's, that's really that process, and I talk about that in the book. Most people's beliefs about themselves have been learned. In other words, somebody told you something about yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you're pretty, you're smart, you're slow, you're fast, whatever it is. And we just take these for granted and really don't go back and pull them back out as adults and say, okay, where did I get this from and is it actually working for me? And so when you start doing that kind of work, what you find is that the majority of people have you know, these limiting beliefs. Mm-hmm. So this so is that, interesting. That's a lot of the work. I just yeah. read a I'm book. Sorry. I just read a book, Psycho Cybernetics. And basically in that book, it's all about the fact that you will never live beyond your own personal self image of yourself. So if you mm-hmm. want to achieve a bigger dream or a bigger goal, you need to figure out how to change your personal self image And that's basically what you're talking about here. Yeah. The first thing, though, is you have to identify it. Right. right? So, I mean, we're a culture. We love change. and We talk about how you're going to fix things. The main thing is if you just have an awareness of it, 
right? Mm-hmm. So I don't start with, hey, let's change and fix right. this. I, I start with, okay, what do you hold as true about yourself? Mm-hmm. Okay, and there's a couple of really fundamental beliefs that you have to address. The first is a, is the belief that you have about yourself. And most people either have a belief that I'm good enough mm-hmm. or I need to be better. Mm-hmm. And we live in a culture where we really embrace this concept of, you know, great people are always wanting to get better, right? Mm-hmm. But if you peel back, you know, so why is it that we're obsessed with getting better? And the answer is because we don't think we're enough. Hmm. You follow me? Yes. Yeah. Interesting. But this, but, but this, but this is this is the common belief is that great people are always wanting to get better and they're never satisfied. And there is some truth to that from a talent standpoint, but from the standpoint of just being a person, just your personhood, if you will. Uh, you know, do you like? Do you accept yourself? That being enough is really critical. And what I find is, even at high performing athletes and even high performing executives. Most people's fundamental belief is I'm not enough. Hmm. And I the believe problem that. with hmm. the concept of I need to be better is that it's a future concept. In other words, you can't get better in the now. You know, getting better is something you do, you know, later today or tomorrow or next week, right? Mm-hmm. But if you if you if you think about performance and what we do, everything we do, we do in the present tense. We do in the now. So what what I believe about myself now is really critical to what I'm going to do now. But we don't really spend a lot of time and energy with that. We're all we're very much future based. You know, it's what I'm going to become in the future. It's what right. I'm going to do in the future. But the future is just a thought. It's not a thing. Everything you do, you do in the now. So the belief that you have about yourself, am I good enough or not, is really critical. Right. And so that's that's one starting point. The other critical belief I think is the belief that we have about the future, which is it's going to work out or it's not going to work out. Mm -hmm. Okay. We live in a, we live in a culture where anxiety is a huge problem and anxiety is a future thing, right? People who are anxious, their thoughts in the future, people who are depressed thoughts in the past. And so if I'm an anxious person, I have some sense that it's not going to be okay. And so that belief that you have about the future, do you think it's going to work out for you or not? And what's interesting is nobody knows, right? I mean, nobody knows the future. And isn't it interesting that even though we don't know the future, the majority of us have some sense of dread Hmm. that something terrible is going to happen to us, even if nothing has ever happened to us terrible. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is 80% of the psychological disorders that we have in our country, okay, which is basically... Uh, one, one in four Americans have a diagnosable psychological disorder, and 80% of that. So one in five of us have so much fear and concern about the future that we need treatment. And we either go to the doctor and treat it, or we self-medicate, right? 20% right. of us. Wow, that's so 20% crazy. of us mm-hmm. have some real fear about what's going to happen next to the point that I can't be present with you right now as I'm trying to talk to you because there's scary thoughts in my head, or I can't mm-hmm. go to sleep at night. Right. Or I can go to sleep. I can't stay Mm -hmm. asleep. And so this belief about the future is really impacts the now. In other words, when you study people who are successful, part of what allows them to do the things that successful people do, take the risks that they take, is they believe it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. When, in fact, none of us know. Right. (laughs) Mm. So this is interesting. Really, two core. But those are those are the two core beliefs that you have to start with. But what you're talking about, it sounds like, is that does your book teach people how to unlearn everything that they've learned for their entire lives? Well, the the unlearning is is acknowledging. Mm -hmm. See, we're we're, again, we're a culture. We're really big on how do you fix it. Right. And and there's a lot of people that will sell you their way of how to fix it. Mm -hmm. What I've noticed is, is that once you become aware of what is true, that awareness is change. Okay. This is this is part of the hit that people would put on psychologists, right? Is well, you're just sitting around talking about your problems. You got to do something about it. Right. The, the the fact of the matter is, talking about it is doing something about it. You know, it it, it is changing right. awareness. And so, well, one of the exercises I do with people is, you know, I'd say, you, you, have you been breathing all day? Well, yeah, I have. Well, what I want you to do right now is just pay attention to your breathing. Just observe yourself right. breathing. And what happens is if you just start paying attention to your breathing, given that your full attention, 
the way you breathe changes. Right. In other words, you'll slow your breathing down. Right. You'll take deeper breaths. Hmm. But keep in mind, I didn't say change the way you breathe. I right. didn't say you're not breathing well enough. I didn't say you need to fix it. I just said pay attention to it. And almost everyone, when they just start paying attention to their breath, it changes. Right. <laughs> you follow me? Yes. Mm-hmm. People, people who have who have a conscious awareness of what they believe their whole life unconsciously, that is a change. Mm-hmm. That is a shift. That is a, a knowing, right? I mean, the whole concept of knowing ourselves and becoming self-aware, it starts with that. The problem is if I become aware of something, and then I judge it as I'm doing it wrong or I'm doing it bad, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I shame myself. I can't believe I've been doing that my whole life. Mm -hmm. That doesn't help. Right. And so, so, so much of what we try to do to be helpful is pointing out the person's flaw and saying you're doing it wrong. Right. And it just so happens that the right way, whoever's prescribing, you know, the the treatment, their way is the right way. Right. Mm -hmm. So in other words, your way is the wrong way and my way becomes Mm -hmm. the right way. Mm -hmm. And, And we all, and if you're struggling... We're all searching for the person who's going to tell us how to do it, hmm. right? I mean, it's so much built into our thought. If I if I uncover a belief that I realize is not helpful, then the first the next thought is, well, how do I fix it? Right. Right. I mean, if you think about you know concepts that have worked, like the twelve step movement, which has been around for addiction for years. Mm-hmm. You know, the first step is is that you admit that you have a problem, and you don't have the power to fix it yourself. Hmm. Okay, that's it. Now, what's interesting is most people who go into a 12-step program, they don't get past step one. In other words, they say, no, I, everybody's telling me I drink too much, but I really don't. Right. Mm-hmm. But the person who says, you know what, I'm drinking too much, you know, it's causing problems with all my relationships, it's got me in trouble at work, you know, maybe I need to drink less, maybe I need to do something about it. That is that is the key poem. Key, key component of it. That is the moment of change, that awareness that I've been doing something and it's been hurtful to me. Mm-hmm. Why can't I fix it? And what I'm saying is we live in a culture where everybody wants to tell you how to fix it. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't work. I'll give you another statistic. You know that when people go to the doctor and they have you know, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, okay? And so these people go to the doctor and they say, here's what's wrong with you. And here's what you need to do to fix it. You with me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 80, 87% of those people do nothing at all. Interesting. Huh. That they're not bothered enough by their condition that they're willing to let it kill them. And so we know more about health, right, than we ever have. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. In, in terms of what we need to do yes. to be healthy. We know more about that now than we ever have. But yet a third of Americans are either obese or morbidly obese. Right. Two thirds, two thirds of us are overweight. Huh. We have healthier food than we've had in a long time, but yet fast food is continuing to do marvelous things. So here's the problem. People, people say I want help, but the majority of people, what they really want to do is they want to be left alone. And this, this is the thing that's for a lot of people who don't, the, the, not a lot of people, the small minority who don't play the game that way, it's always a surprise to them. So for somebody in business, do you have any words of advice? Because I think this, the fact we opened on the fact that we spend 90 to 95% of our time um, in an unconscious mind controlling things. Yeah. yeah. It, and I really think I was just talking to somebody yesterday about this, how, I mean, stuff like this permeates, you go to a training class and if somebody sure. says something different than what you believe, sometimes people just shut off because that person, yeah, they either shut it. That's yeah. right. They, they either declare that the other person is wrong. Right. I mean, it's like religion and politics. Yes. Right? Yes. You either declare that the other person is an idiot and they don't know what yes. they're talking about. <laughs> yes. Or you, you, you have so little faith in yourself and your own ability to get it right that you jump to the next expert. Right. And so what happens is these people go from one expert to the other, right? From, from right. one guru to another. Exactly. And, and, and there's huge business to be made in that. I, I personally don't really want to participate in that. Right. 
I, I want people to, you know, just stop for a minute and just identify what are the things that you know absolutely that are true. Yes. But let me answer your question because you asked a good one about business, okay? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people go into business to make money, to become successful. Mm -hmm. And and people do that. I, I personally don't encourage folks to do that. What I think it, we should do is to find out what are the activities that you do that when you're participating in those activities, you feel the most alive, you feel the most complete, you feel the most passion, and spend your time doing that. Because it is possible to go out there and bust your tail and make a ton of money and be miserable. And right. I know a lot of these people, and I bet you do too. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yet, we, but yet we'll call it success, you know. Man, he's got a great business. Yeah, but the guy has to go home and drink a bottle of whiskey, you know, to uh, and watch TV exactly. to anesthetize himself. Right. So my definition of success in business is not about how much money you make. I think it's about finding something that you're really passionate about, that you enjoy doing, that you see as a way to better other people's lives, mm -hmm. and then surround yourself with people. I'm talking about your employees, your mm -hmm. partners, with people who you enjoy being with, who who share the same values, right? Right. And so spend your time with people that you enjoy being with and and spend your day doing activities that you enjoy. And a lot of people say, well, you can't make a living doing that. Yes, you can. Yep. Yeah. Most most people don't, but it is possible to make a living that way. Wow. Awesome stuff. So that, that would that would that would be that would be my encouragement. I think for people who are taking a job, mm -hmm. you know, for folks who are going into the job market or changing, right? I think the most important thing, the question you need to ask is, who is my boss? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you need to spend time with that person because right. we know from research that the relationship that you have with your boss, how your boss treats you, is going to affect your life more than any other Absolutely. person. Absolutely, Inclu including your spouse. Right. And, 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 and this is this is what I see all day long. When I work with and coach business executives, 90% of the conversation we have is about people, hmm. getting the right people, getting the right people in the right job, moving people out of the job if they're not the correct person. In other words, for most business leaders, people decisions are the most important and the most difficult of all decisions that you will make. Right. And most people who are outside of business, they don't realize that. That senior executives, those are the things that they're wrestling with. How mm -hmm. do I get the right people? How do I keep them here? How do I create an environment where, where they can do their best? Because it was interesting is most organizations, they'll tell you they want you to do your best work, but they'll actually create policies and procedures that so keep you from doing it. Right. Right. Which, which is, right? Which is mm -hmm. the irony. Right. Right. That, you know, and, and so what you'll see if you, if you interview people who've had a long career, they can tell you about a certain job where they performed at a very high level, and then they went to another company, did the similar job, and did it right. at a low level. Right, right. And and, they, and you say, well, what happened to you, man? You must have lost it, right? You lost your drive or your passion. No, you didn't. You were the same person. What happened is, is that you're surrounded by people that you couldn't stand, and they couldn't stand you. And whether you like it or not, human beings were social animals, right. were herd animals, and were affected by the herd. Interesting. Absolutely. And that's not, that's hmm. not going to change. You know, but most people know that. I mean, right. it's rare for a human being who will consciously choose to go live off in the woods by themselves, right? That's a rare, rare situation. Right. So that 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 is, I think, as I've worked with a number of businesses, you know, who are the people that you pick and surround yourself with and do that really well? And if you do that really well, you're probably going to have a successful business. Right. Great. Great stuff. It is. So unfortunately, our time is up, and I I could I had twelve more questions, so we'll have to have you back another time. Well, um, but I'm, for, I'm sorry, and I, and I mm -hmm. pulled over. I'm traveling, so I'm mm -hmm. pulled over on the side of the road. No worries. I'm trying, to, uh, trying to keep it quiet. So for anybody listening, this is Dr. Stan Beecham, and his book is Elite Minds, How Winners Think Differently to Create a Competitive Edge and Maximize Success. So until our next interview, feel free to check out his book, which is available on Amazon. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Beecham. Thank, Thank you. you. And if people want to track me down, they can go to my website, drstanbeecham.com. Great. Excellent. We're going to take contact me that way. All right. Great. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Get Real after this.